What is up, my tricksters? It has been a long, long minute. Oh my goodness. I went a whole first week of 2022 without any content, and it was a nightmare. I've been working on some stuff from behind the scenes. I've been kind of hinting at it a little bit on Twitter here and there. But, uh... I, I lost a bunch of saved work, and it was like, oh my goodness, because some of my tools are, you know, they're on, you know, online, and my provider, Windstream, decided that uh, last week was a good time to have connectivity issues. So, your friendly neighborhood Yu-Gi-Oh! superhero was unable to make any content last week, because I lost a bunch of saved stuff, and... You know, on top of having to... Re I got a new machine. I'm sure you guys probably saw on my Instagram um, that, uh, you know, I got a new machine. So I had to, like, you know, transfer files and, you know, get new programs, you know, re-download some old ones. It was... It, it's, it has been a bit of a uh, <laughs> uh, tinkering uh, kind of week in the past week. So I've been doing that. That's basically what I did after Christmas. All I've done is tinker and... I lose saved data that I was trying to you know use to make content for you guys so uh for the first video of 2022 well we're gonna bring a deck that I haven't really really piloted myself ironically so uh I'm sure the video kind of title kind of gave it away yeah we're gonna be do a, discussing a shit all deck profile um a little a little different from my my usual one no no dinosaurs in this deck profile um, but this deck is, uh, pretty lethal, so we're gonna get into that here in a minute, but, uh, if you guys want to support the channel, right now the best two ways to do so is to check out my spring store, and, uh, to check out your playmats, the link will be in the description, um, those two things are uh, basically the best way you can support this channel right now, uh, and you'll get really cool stuff in it, you'll get merch with Frank's <laughs> face on it, you'll get... Uh, you know, or you can get, uh, you know, some custom sleeves, like, kind of like the ones I have. I always have, I always forget I have to show you guys. I mean, I don't have to. Your playmaster doesn't make me do that, but I always feel like I have to show you what I'm talking about. So, yeah, you can get custom sleeves with whatever you want on the back of them. I got my, my little logo here, but you can, you can get whatever you want on the back of yours. They, they'll they'll put they'll put any artwork you want if you make artwork yourself you can use it as a way to advertise that etc cetera, etc cetera. so go check out those links and support the channel um without further ado i guess let's go ahead and i'm gonna we're gonna hop into like a, a bit of an old school style video for the first video of the year we're gonna uh we're gonna go check out some replay footage and uh then we're gonna go into the deck profile so let's let's hop into that replay footage
All right, there you have it, guys. That was the replay footage. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Those were probably some interesting duels. You got to see some very competitive decks get the butt kicking that they so righteously deserved. I'm just anyway. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Anyway, guys, let's go over this deck profile, and uh, we're gonna talk about um, the the deck choices and the strategy and all this. This is very like a, I want to call this a trap should all deck. So. First of all, we got uh, Hell Shit All. Believe it or not, the the sum this card actually has two really decent effects. The first one is, is that we get to send a Shit All monster that is from the extra deck to the graveyard, and then we get to basically send a card on the field. And I believe it doesn't target. Yes, it doesn't target, so it's a really good way to uh, get rid of problematic monsters. Granted, we are losing a Shadal card, but, you know, Apcolone also gets kind of a bonus off of that. Uh, of course, then there's also the other effect, where if it goes to the graveyard, buy a card effect, so little multiple ways you have to get it there. Uh, basically, if there are different attributes on the field, we can literally, like, mill that many cards, and that can potentially cause Shadal cards to go off, so that's... I really like that. Also, it's stat line, 29-29. It's so important. You'd be surprised how many games I probably should have lost where all I did was, you know, send a window to the graveyard and put this guy in the field, and then they just couldn't beat over the defense points. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he saved my butt a few times. Then we got the beast. You got to have the beast. You know, draw. I'm playing two dragon because back row decks are a pain in the butt and we need a way to get rid of them. Also, this card is like just a num uh, decent spot removal if it flips. And in this variant of the deck, those flip effects um, mean more than they normally would. Uh, because of the... When we get to the trap cards, I'll explain. Then we got the Squamata. This this is another... Uh, you know, like I said, the flip can mean... It's basically a man-eater bug, but also like... The cool this deck you actually do want to play Squamata a lot. I've seen a lot of Shadal players like kind of like axing Squamata out of their decks, and and I get why because they don't really need to. And a lot of people are playing like when they do play Shadals, they're more of an engine than an actual like centerpiece of the deck. But if you're gonna make the Shadals the centerpiece of your deck, you definitely want Squamata. This card is 
uh, a key piece to letting you uh, mill certain things. So uh, speaking on that, let's go with Armageddon Knight and in the same vein, Mathematician. These two guys basically uh, sent Armageddon Knight sends darks, uh, Mathematician sends uh, low, level four or lowers. Um, I like Armageddon Knight over Mathematician, so uh, that unfortunately Armageddon Knight is at one. Which is kind of weird to think about. Like, I don't know why it's still at one. Because it's in the grand scheme. Like, <laughs> my Mathematician has been at three. And I argue Mathematician is actually a better card. But anyway. The point that I want to get at is Squamata is in here. Because Squamata is kind of the mid-range card that you, you send to send something else. So, for example, if you have Armageddon Knight. And you actually need to send Windy or Ariel or, uh, you know hollow you send squamata and then squamata will send the appropriate shell attribute wise and then a same thing if you need a higher level like say you need beast or you know what i mean instead of you know one of the lower levels you to send like maybe you just want to draw a card um yeah you send squamata squamata sends the, the appropriate card so squamata kind of like fixes these two cards uh basically allowing you to keep playing the game or send what you actually need. Uh, Goddess of the Third Eye is in here for a very silly reason. We will get to that later. But it's also a light attribute. So it's mostly used for construct. Uh, that is why she is in here. Um, for my silly stuff, which you will you will probably see in a minute. Or you kind of if you've got an eagle eye, you've already spotted it. Uh, <laughs> she uh, that is she's in here for the for the silly thing that I want I like to do, and of course for uh, as light attribute. But if uh, you need to change it for your deck. You could easily pick something like Perform H Trick Clown or uh, Effect Veiler if you want to add hand traps into your variant. Um, yeah. Then you got Ariel here. This card uh, is actually uh, the flip effect doesn't really still doesn't come up like like I mentioned like how flip effects are a little more you more uh, impactful and important in this deck. Um, well, for Ariel, that may not be the only case because you're not going to banish too much. Because uh, I don't have Schism, so I'm playing the deck with the actual card pool, with my actual own personal card pool. That's why it looks a little weird. So if you're wondering where Schism is, that's why it's not in here. Um, then we got Windy. Windy is like the bread and butter of the Shadal deck now. I mean, you really can't play Shadals without Windy. Uh, she is just that important to the to the strategy. Because both of her effects, whether she's sent, sent or flipped, she's giving you Shadal monsters. And that's that's so impactful. And then, of course, by the way, don't forget, if Mathematician is on the field, and a lot of players forget this, if this guy gets killed in battle, you draw a card. Because it rarely does come up, but it does come up. And I've actually used it to crash into other monsters that are about the, like, the same attack points. Uh, like uh, Dogmatica, uh, the the one that's her, their Stratos monster. I can't remember her name. But basically, in one game, I, I remember I crashed him in to draw a new card. So that was really fun. Getting rid of a problematic monster that I needed to get rid of so my extra deck monsters could do work while also, you know, drawing, you know, not losing any resources um, or life points. And then we got uh, Shadal Hedgehog, which is also very important to the deck because this is, this is just... Because we have a lot of cards where we have to discard for fodder, this card actually does come up uh, being sent to give us more Shadal monsters. Um, but also, the flip effect can get us to our spells and traps. Speaking of, we got Magicalized Fusion. This is the only, I think, banish card from my main, my main deck. Basically, we're banishing two cards, two Fusion Summon, a Spellcaster. We got a few options on that front. Um, should all Fusion? You don't know. Thanks to this card and Super Poly and Imperm, this deck can actually go first or second, thanks to the, these these lines of cards. So it's actually like you know just amazing. And also like when they throw an extra deck monster that just really doesn't do a whole lot, like Sky Striker. Oh yeah, you can you can do some gnarly stuff. And then we got card destruction because all of our Shadal monsters will trigger off of card destruction. Also, it makes great Ash Blossom bait. Oftentimes, when I draw this card, I haven't really needed to use it. It's just uh, icing on the cake, if you will. Like I'm getting rid of cards I can't really use as is, and then I'm just oh yeah, here we go. Shadal effects like literally uh, in a Shadal deck, card destruction is a is a plus. It's not a it's not a neg. So it's it's. It's awesome. Foolish Burial. It's spell version of Mathematician and Armageddon Knight. And then we got Monster Born because, you know, sometimes you got to bring back monsters. <laughs> Duh. Uh, El Shadal Fusion. It's like our uh, 
I don't know. It's just it's more or less just a uh, fourth and fifth copy of Super Poly, uh, which we can set as like a trap, which is kind of like the the bonus of playing it. Unless we want to use something like a little more like I don't know, uh, put something on the field like ahead of time, that kind of thing. We don't have to give up our Shadal Fusion, wait for them to play extra deck monsters. Super Poly, it's board wipe, honestly. That's that's what it's here for. It's to get rid of problematic monsters, Dragoon, DPE, etc. Um, Imperm, this card is so integral. Uh, but you could also play this deck with Effect Veiler, uh, to be honest. Um, I Rarely has it come up that Imperm was actually that much better than Effect Veiler, which also would help make more Construct if you want Construct to be more of a, a centerpiece in your own deck. Just giving that free information there for you guys, so you guys can, if you decide you want to play this version of the deck, you can make, you know, make a choices accordingly. Uh, then we got your our Red Shadal Incarnation. This card is basically back to the front for Shadals. It can bring it back, uh, and that's why one of the reason why the the flip effects come into common so much more because we can summon that, set that card, just flip it, and it's fun. And then you got your uh, Paleozoic Dynamiscus in here. This is spot removal as well as triggering Shadals. So, because the discard actually isn't cost, it's part of the effect. The target is the disc is the is the cost. So, unfortunately, if it gets negated, you don't get to send this at all. But you know, they had to balance it out somehow. Anyway, then we got Sinister Shadow Games. Like I said, the flip of the flip of the Shadal monsters, the flip effects actually play more role into this deck than they normally would. With Sinister Shadow Games, basically, you're it's full it's a trap version of Foolish Burial, Mathematician, Armageddon Knight. We're sending Shadals off of the, off of this trap card, but we're also, if we have a Shadal set on the field already, it flips it. So it's it's kind of like a uh, this card can really just you know cause all sorts of havoc for the opponent when you trigger it off. Also, uh, if you don't like to play the triple of it, you could probably play it at two. I often side one out in in going second. Um, and then we got Dogmatic of Punishment. Uh, this dub will lock you out of your extra deck, so be careful when you use it. But uh, oftentimes. Uh, you can use it to get to things that, uh, like App Cologne and stuff like that. You can send App Cologne, or you can send the uh, Intis or whatever. So you basically you're getting pops or searches, so you can continue to play uh, or survive if necessary. And then we got to the extra deck, and we'll also talk about the sideboard here in a minute. All right, so first of all, we got Shikinaga. You know, it's your Earth Fusion, uh, three thousand defense. It's it can be a negate. Um, oftentimes it won't let that resolve, but uh, Construct. It's is this is card is the king of the deck, honestly. Uh, Construct is just being able to destroy things without actually doing any battle. And, of course, you know, it's a light, so that's what we're sending the goddess in here for. Um, this card isn't actually the integral card. And then, of course, I'm sure you guys already can tell well, the, what in the heck is that. This is Dark Cavalry. Um, as you guys know, if I'm going to play a deck, I'm probably going to throw something weird in it just because I, I have that, uh, that, uh, that casual urge to be unique. And uh, I have to throw something weird in all of my decks. So the weird thing that I'm doing is I'm throwing Dark Cavalry in here. Um, you need a Warrior and a Dark Magician. So the, actually, there's only one way you're making this card. You're not likely going to even use the spell to make it. But you know what? Every, every extra deck has that one or two monsters that is like, not likely to see play. It's just there for if, if, the, if the opportunity presents itself type of thing. So... The Dark Cavalry is uh, the only way you're going to fuse this card because you need a Dark Magician and you need a Warrior. Well, Armageddon Knight is our Warrior, and Goddess will replace the Dark Magician uh, because she can replace a named monster in a fusion for a fusion summon. So basically, you play Magicalized Fusion, you banish these two, you get Dark Cavalry, and the one of the the reason why this card is kind of I wanted this card in here is because I wanted something that uh could get big really easily, and we play a lot of spells and traps, and this guy gets a Let's see, what is it? Well, 100 extra attack for each one. Um, I've literally gotten him up to like 3,700 is the highest I've gotten him before I finally got him out there. So he was actually big enough to beat over an Ultimate Conductor Tyranno. <laughs> uh, it's just kind of funny. Um, basically, that's the whole point. And then, of course, if you if your opponent does activate something to target, you yes, you can, you can discard and negate a targeting effect. <laughs> Um, that rarely comes up, but it's basically just a really cool thing. Um, the bigger, actually, effect that I, I found he's useful for is that he has a piercing. He does piercing. So, you know, you kill a defense position monster, uh, they, you do damage, and then, you know, voila. 
And then, of course, uh, we're going to go into uh, some of our Super Poly targets. Uh, one of our Super Poly targets is uh, Dragos Capellia. This is in here, you know, for Dragoon, DPE, that kind of thing. You basically Super Poly, and then, like, oh, your, your disruption slash negate became my negate. Is it the best Nicard? No, I'm pretty sure Starving Venom would be better, but I didn't, I don't have, I only have one, and that's in my, uh, my Dino variant of this deck. So, um, then we got El Shadow Grista. This card rarely ever sees play. Uh, you actually could take it out if you don't want to play it, honestly. I've rarely ever summoned it. Um, it's just in here because Hollow's a fire. Um, then we got Apcalone. This card is like literally the bread and butter of this deck. <laughs> literally, we're, we're, it can be a, it can, with cards like uh, El Shadol uh, um, Shadol Fusion here. It, it basically can become a quick effect negate, or it can be a uh, you know if we want to get rid of. Uh, or you send it off of um, Dogmatic Punishment and you get searches. Uh, and the reason I say you can get searches is because you can, like, pick Get Squamata, Send Squamata, or Windy, and then, like, you know, you'll get a card. Or get Beast, Send, Draw a card. You know, it's et cetera, et cetera. You'll get something off of this card, usually. Um, then we got Win Winda. If you time it right, you can really stop, stop an opponent from playing Yu-Gi-Oh. It doesn't happen for me because uh, Edo Pro hates me, but... It occasionally it does happen. Another super poly target I have in here is a uh, Deplexer Chimera, mostly just because I come across a lot of Cyburst decks. But this card's actually really interchangeable. You could take this out if you don't want to play it, honestly, or you could side it, which is what I'm, when we get to the sideboard, I'm gonna talk a little bit about that. Um, then we got Elder Entity Nin Intis. Um, it's the other card you probably want to send off of Dogmatic of Punishment because it basically turns it in Dogmatic of Punishment into like an Icarus attack, where you didn't have to give up anything. So. Yeah. Then we got Mud Dragon, Super Poly Target. It's, you know, it's, it's, the cool thing about it is if you have to, you can turn it into a light monster so you can make your constructs. Uh, Nightmare Phoenix, Screw Back Row, Wee Witch, uh, just because I couldn't think of anything else to put in this deck out of my personal guard pool. Uh, so if you have any good suggestions, go ahead and put them in the comments below. Uh, like I said, this deck is, there's still room to tinker with this deck, as I've been saying. There's like a handful of cards you really don't have to play if you don't want to. Uh, and then we got Gravity Controller. Um, this card just kind of comes up every now and then because, like, you know, maybe you need Winda out of the way. Winda out of the way. So you just, you know, turn a Winda into Gravity Controller. Then you get to make all the special summons you need to and uh, end the game. So that's kind of what Gravity Controller kind of is for me. He's just kind of a, oh, get Winda off the field so I can, you know, special summon freely. Um... It doesn't come up too much because this deck is a little a little more control style, a little slower. You know, like I said, we're using a lot of trap cards so that we can, um, you know, slow the game down and uh, force the opponent to, like, worry about the back row instead of the front row, which is actually really funny because it's actually a really uh, kind of a smoke screen almost when you're playing the, the, the Chanel deck this way because your opponents sit there and they focus on all these back row cards, and they are powerful, but because all these back row cards are actually all, most of them are connected to a monster effect, the, the like, you know, it's the, they might bring the wrong kind of negation to the field to stop it. Like, there's been tons of times where, like, people bring, like, floodgates, uh, and it just it just doesn't matter because I have Shadals of pretty much of every attribute, so if you try to, like, goes and match me, I'll just summon the ones that are the correlating attribute or whatever that I need. Um, and then, of course, there's, like, you know, there's just tons of crazy stuff you can do. Um... Now we need to go into the sideboard. Now you're probably going, well, your sideboard is really thin. Yeah, this is just like cards I, I wanted to suggest to you guys. Like it's going to, you know, I always leave the sideboard a little bit empty because I, I know that everybody's uh, locals or the metagame that they personally face is going to be a little different from everybody else's. Um, at your locals, it might be like all Sword Soul or all, uh, you know, all Flunderies. I don't really know. So I just kind of like throw a few cards in here that I think you should have as options and leave the rest to you. Uh, and also, you don't have to use those options. These are just stuff I've noticed. Um, if you're if your meta is going to have a lot of zombie decks, I think, uh, you know, you're, which zombies are looking like they're going to get some support in the near future. So I would probably want to have this card available if you have a copy. Um, same for pendulums. If you, I know that they're getting a new link monster, so you might want to have something like Starving Venomy Dragon because it's just a dark monster plus a pendulum monster. Well, we have we got the darks. They will bring the pendulums, and we can get rid of problematic cards as they go. Or if they happen to have a dark monster and a pendulum, you can just you know, bloop, 
two monsters, no problem. And a lot of the problematic uh, pendulum monsters also happen to be attribute dark. So, and then of course we got uh, Dimensional Barrier. This card is, because we also play a, a trap variant deck, this card just kind of seems important to play. Because it doesn't matter what we're up against, we can we can you flip this and use it. So, if we're up against an Xyz deck, Synchro, etc. Like, if you're up against Sword Soul, you flip the L Barrier and watch them go, Ugh. And then... And then we got Red Reboot. Back row is a pain in the butt. Honestly. Yes, we got we got a few options for that. You know what I mean? With uh with Shadal Dragon and Nightmare uh Phoenix, but some but like Eldlich is still a challenging deck to come across, especially because it's kinda of funny because we kinda of play in a similar way to them right now, uh with this with this variant deck. Uh but Red Reboot's gonna slow slow that stuff down, like turn off their trap cards and then let us play the game. You don't wanna use this willy nilly, and if you can set it don't add just you know don't just activate it outright but yeah all right so there you go guys um things you're going to be doing a little bit of, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys this heads up if you made it to this part of the video i'm going to be making some changes we're going to be doing a, lots of experimentation this year uh we're going to try a bunch of new things um i'm going to try to get uh more collabs going this year than i have in the past i'm going to try to uh, I've got some people from locals who also have small channels who I'm thinking about, or I'm going, I'm not thinking about, I'm actually, I'm going to try to make content with them so that they can, you know, so we can, you know, you know get their channels a little higher up in the numbers, etc. And, uh, you know, maybe we'll work with some people, some other content creators, you know, uh, I don't know who I'll, I'll be able to get, but we're going to we're gonna try. My skits are going to be interesting, so uh, listen to the voices of some of the monsters because they're going to sound familiar to you <laughs> if you're in the Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu -Oh space of, uh, you know, of YouTube. Anyway, guys, if you're new to the Ben 10,000 YGO channel, please consider subscribing. Uh, let's get to 10,000. Let's do it. I think I, I think uh, 2022 might be the year uh, we, we can do something crazy. So let's do something crazy and get me to, to the 10,000 mark. I think that'd be hilarious if by the end of 2022, I actually got 10,000 subscribers. So uh, do me a favor, guys. Share this with your friends. <laughs> Let's do that. Anyway, guys, I'm Ben2000YGO. I'm your friendly neighborhood Yu-Gi-Oh! superhero, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.